Welcome back everyone. In this lesson, I thought it would be fun to remove a background from behind a flower and then incorporate our own custom background, make it much, uh, much more appealing. And then we can add in a bit of detail to make everything uh, pop. So what we're going to do first is we want to remove the background from behind our flower. So let's just go into the masking options for this particular layer. Remember, it's the sort of rectangle with the circle in the center of it. And this will show us the masking options. Remember, white reveals and black conceals. So you can see that it's revealing the entirety of the flower. Let's just go into this menu like we did in the last lesson. And let's choose the architecture behind the flower. And let's, oops, let's choose it. And let's choose Apply. And because we have Paint Out selected, it's going to paint that particular section away from our scene. Now, what I want to do here before we sort of clean up the sections that it didn't uh, work out. What I want to do is just add in a color fill layer that will be our background. So let's use this option here in our layers pane. This is the add color fill layer button. I'll select that and I'm going to use all black. And I'll just drag that below my flower there. And you can see it's looking good, but we do have these sections that are looking a little bit wonky. So let me show you a couple ways that you can refine to remove these little halos or any sections that it may have missed on there. Now, what I would typically do in this particular instance is I would use my perfect brush, which you can use just by hitting B on your keyboard. This will grab you your masking brush, which you can use to brush away particular areas on your scene. But what I like to use is the perfect brush here. If you select that, it will strictly find areas that you that are uh, similar in tone, and it will mask those away rather than masking the entirety of the scene. It will detect edges and tones and things like that. So I'm just going to use maybe a smaller brush size. I can use the bracket keys on my keyboard to modify my brush size. The left bracket will decrease the size, and the right bracket will increase. And I'm just going to set this minus option. Oh. I'm forgetting something real quick, um, and I do this all the time. We need to make sure that we have the layer selected that we want to modify. So if we were to paint on this color fill, it wouldn't really even do anything because we're not even modifying the correct layer. So let's make sure we have the flower selected and we have the mask for that selected so that we're modifying the mask for this particular layer, that flower layer. Uh, so now we're going to do just back to that. We're going to just hover over this area that we don't want, and we're just going to place that minus sign over it. And if I brush, you can see it will remove that section for me. I'll do the same thing in there. And I can just sort of follow suit in any of those areas that may have been a little wonky to begin with. Cool. So maybe this section here. All right, so everything is looking gravy that way. Maybe need one more there. Everything's looking good that way. The one one thing I want to do, oops, I see one more just right there. Uh, the next thing I want to do is just remove any haloing. This little haloing can be tough to get, but that's why we have this chisel tool, which we can access on the left side of our screen. We'll go to the refine tools. And at the top tool modifier bar, we have the different refine tools that we can use. Let's use the chisel mask tool. And the chisel mask tool allows us to chisel away the edges from our scene. So if I hover over here on these edges, you can see it chisels away that edge for me. But what I'm going to do instead is, uh, is I'm just going to double click this. And if you double click this chisel tool, it will remove the edge from the entirety of the scene. So if I keep clicking this, I can get a much more refined edge there on my flower. And there we go. It's looking much, much better. Uh, we do have a little, maybe one area down here to clean up. So let's just clean up that section. Sometimes it can be just a little bit of cleaning up, but we're really just clicking to clean it up. We're not actually doing you know much brushing. but I think it's looking looking good. So now what I wanna do is let's just go up here to our layers pane and I'm going to right click this layer and I'm going to choose new stamped layer. And by choosing a new stamped layer, that's going to 
duplicate these two layers and then merge them together into one composite layer that we can use to then modify the image as a whole. So if I turn this off and I turn off our color fill layer, this has just sort of brought those two layers into one, one here. So let's just double click to rename this and I'll rename this just composite. And so now let's go in here and let's modify our develop tab a little bit. I'm just going to pull back on the exposure a hair. I'm going to add in a bit of contrast and then I'm going to boost the whites a bit. Just like that. If we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, it's looking much more, it's looking much more dramatic and I feel like it's a much better placement of tone on here to sort of fit the backdrop there. Now let's go into the effects tab. Let's add a filter. And let's add dynamic contrast to the entirety. It's not really going to matter on that black backdrop. And let's just use Surreal so it's really intense. And we'll pull it back so it's not so intense there. And if we hit the backslash key on our keyboard, this is the original, or well, the rather the original flower. This is the after with some style. And maybe we could boost the, the midtones a little bit. So you guys can see a bit more of that detail. And I think that's looking good. Let's just go into our layers and I'll reset our original layer. And this is the original, completely original photograph. And this is with just the quick background swap and a little bit of refinement there.